from the Carolina Raptor Center. Um, thank you for tuning in to our avian home adventure. Today we have our red-legged Suriyama out. Um, so we're just doing some exploring and walking around. Let's see if I can get them a little bit closer to you. There we go. So Suriyamas are from Central, or more, sorry, South America. So these guys live in a lot of grassland areas. If you notice, he has really, really tall legs. So those are perfect for peeking over <laughs> and running, <laughs> running away from the camera too. <laughs> so they can fly, but they spend a lot of time on their ground um, foraging. So what I mean by that is digging through plant life, doing a lot of exploring um, in the tall grasses. So you can fly, but they spend most of their time just running around. Um, on average, they run about 20 miles an hour. Um, but they can reach speeds of up to 40 miles an hour. So they're really fast animals. <laughs> Let's see if I can get him to come closer again. Um, he is such a fun bird to bring out. <laughs> you know, if you kind of let him just do whatever he wants and just call him back. Um, I put down my target stick, which is this big fancy thing with the tennis ball. Um, so I put it down to ask him to come to me. When he comes to me, I give him a treat. What's he eating today? He is eating worms. You can look into my pouch. Try not to let him see. Worms, there's some quail, um, there's some berries. So they like to eat a variety of things. They would even eat some plant life, but they're mostly carnivorous. Um, they do like a lot of insects. They do eat things like lizards as well, rodents, um, a big variety in their diet. And for whatever reason, he's picking to go to a different area, so we might have to move <laughs> so we can follow him. Uh, we like to take him on walks. Um, this is really great enrichment for him, so he gets to explore um, our whole campus here, walk around, um, sometimes even find little insects and things to eat. Um, it's really great to take him out to our flight field where it's really nice and sunny. Um, he'll actually sun or let the UV rays heat up his feathers which is really great for his nutrition. <laughs> so he has no interest in hanging around, but that's okay. So with our birds, the way we train them is with positive reinforcement, which means that every time um, we'd like him to do something, we're asking for a behavior. So we would never force him to do anything. Um, when he does that behavior we're looking for, then we give him a treat. Sometimes he tries to give it back to us. <laughs> So he has a lot of control in his life and that's how we like it with our birds. So he can kind of go wherever he wants. Uh, we just ask him to come back and we work really hard building trust with our birds and building a relationship with them um, that's mutual. Where is he from? Um, so they are from South America. Does he have a favorite treat? Um, I would say he really loves the, the super worms which are basically just big mealworms, and he loves the blueberries. Those are some of his favorite. Uh, we've also given him things like grapes, um, some strawberries, a variety, but we try to minimize how much fruit we give him because they're really sugary. Um, so, I mean, that is really what makes it a rewarding treat. He's just kind of strutting around. Um, so I have this little rope toy. I'm gonna see if he'll do it, um, but they have a very unique way of um, killing their prey. This is different from the one that he's used to, so we'll see. Maybe not today. So he did a little bit of something that they do. So they do flick their <laughs> prey and they would slam it against something. Are you gonna give it back to me? Um, they're kind of nesting time of year, and so he's busy trying to find uh, somebody to court. <laughs> what kind of bird is he again? He's a red-legged Suriyama. You want this? No, he's no interest in it. That's okay. <laughs> so typically, he's very particular about the toy that he uses. Um, but what they would do is pick up the. the he would pick up this toy. Oh. And <laughs> <laughs> how comfortable he is with us. He's kind of a goofball. Um, but they would pick, he would pick this up and he would slam it on the ground. So instead of using their feet like owls and hawks would to really grab onto their prey, 
they pick them up and they slam them. So they find like a hard spot, um, like a rock or just a hard part on the ground that they would uh, make it into like a jello. And I know a lot of us like jello, but he's more particular about the lizard than the mouse flavored jello. How old is he and how old can they get? He's about two years old. Um, I believe they could be, oh, that's a good question. Don't quote me on this, but I say like 15 to 20 years. Um, that's something I definitely need to do some investigating on. Um, my co some of my coworkers might be in chat, might be able to answer that. He's very interested in this little water, water pipe. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> oh, so what you're seeing here is him foraging and I think he just, nope, almost caught a butterfly. Our lives are never dull <laughs> with these guys, as you can tell. And it's really hilarious because we come up with plans for these, uh, these videos and they uh, definitely have something else in mind, <laughs> which is okay. It makes it more fun for us. Yeah, yeah. Audrey, do you want to just come over here? What he's seeing is he's seeing um, our volunteer, our outreach and volunteer coordinator. So he's just checking her out. They're very social, <laughs> as you can tell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I guess we'll, we'll go hang out with Audrey for a second too. <laughs> You're very popular. Way up to me, like we're longtime buddies. I know. Yeah. He's like, oh wait, it's the booth. I think. Yeah, yeah. He's interested in everything else. It's so funny. Well, Audrey, you're on our live stream. Welcome. Hey, you, <laughs> I'm sure she was so prepared for this. McKenna says hi, Audrey. Oh, hi, McKenna. I just cleaned a whole bunch of rehab water dishes, which is the highlight of my week. I know it doesn't sound exciting, but the fact is, I don't know what's in each enclosure. And when I opened the door today and was faced with five angry clacking owl fledglings, the end all be all. <laughs> we'll see if we can get him to come back to his enclosure, but he might have other plans. Like I said, they have um, a lot of choice in their life here with us, as you can tell. Uh, he's just exploring. He found the rakes and the shovels. Which are very important for us, keeping that their habitats really, really clean and tidy. All right, I guess we're gonna hang out here, which is fine too. <laughs> you can try to sneak by, Audrey. <laughs> so they are social. They're more social than some of our other raptors. So these guys would be in small family groups. Um, so he does kind of like to hang out with us and go find other people. He's a lot of fun. We like taking him on um, walks on our display trail and um, kind of surprising guests with him. Um, just people get to go on like an impromptu, impromptu walk with him. Hadley would like to know why his legs bend the wrong way. Why his bends wrong the wrong or bend the wrong way? Um, so a lot of people think that they have backward knees, but they do not. Those are actually part of his. Um, his hops and so they bend and so he can actually lay down okay bye, okay, bye. <laughs> Hiya. Wow, he is very serious about everything here. <laughs> so usually it's us taking him on a walk, but today it's him taking us on a walk. McKenna would like to know, yeah, can yeah. they jump? Yeah, yeah. They can. They can jump pretty high. Uh, I would say he probably can jump about um, three feet high, which is impressive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what 
do you do in situations like this where they seem to be distracted? We don't normally walk to this area of our parking lot, but we're going back to a more familiar area. And so he's just kind of checking it out. Um, there's a lot more competing reinforcers when we're out here, so he might not want the seats I have. Instead, he wants to check out the American flag here um, or whatever is out here and explore, which is fine. Um, a lot of times we just have to wait them out. So we always want them to want to come back to us too. Um, and we're not worried about him really going anywhere. He's one where we take him on walks all the time. So this isn't too out of the realm of normal. Hello, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Can you reintroduce him? Yeah, so this is our red-legged Siriyama. Oh, and you might actually stun out here. Um, so his name is Yaya. It's short for Yaya or terror birds. Um, terror birds were a, um, a species of prehistoric bird that were about six to ten feet tall and they killed their prey in the same way that these Sariyamas do. So they pick up their prey and they slam it down. Um, so it's pretty cool. These guys are thought to be one of the last remaining links um, to those terror birds. You might find a sunny spot, a little spot, and lay down. This is probably a nice, uh, relaxing avian home adventure. Very peaceful out here. It's actually nice and warm in the sun, too. So hopefully you guys are getting to go out and enjoy the sunshine. So what he's doing right now is he's kind of looking at a log. Um, there are probably a little bugs, little insects on there. So they like to forage and find things like that. Things in tall grasses, things in um, <laughs> decaying logs and eat them. So they eat a lot of insects, some mammals, some lizards, some birds, but also things like berries too. So that wing's dropping. Usually that's a sign that he's gonna do something called sun. So what they'll do is they'll kind of sprawl on the ground and open up their wings and um, kind of fluff out their feathers a little bit and really try to absorb that sunlight. Can he climb? Not really climb, but he can jump. Um, I was saying earlier, he probably could jump about three feet tall or something about that. He looks more interested in kind of <laughs> walking around or stunning right now. <laughs> He's really enjoying it, so. And you said he could fly, right? Yeah, he can fly. They spend a lot of time on the ground though. Um, so they can, <laughs> I think you just found like a little insect, a little worm. Um, yeah, they spend most of the time on the ground. They can fly away from like predators if they need to. They needed an escape or to get up. Um, when they nest in a the while, they're typically lower nesting sites. Little adventurer. Oh, yeah. he, that's a stick. <laughs> over here with the log. Can you tell us what he eats again? Yeah, so he eats a variety of things. Today he's getting a little bit of quail, a little bit of um, superworms, or they're basically big mealworms, berries. Um, I think I have some chicken in here too. So we give him a variety of different treats that he can have. But in the wild they'd also eat things like lizards. Um, other kinds of insects, of course, um, wild berries and things like that. 
He's very good at camouflage. Oh, he is. Yeah, definitely. So he's all different textures all over his body um, that really help him blend in. Really, so, the, the only thing that really sets him apart are those kind of orange red legs, and that's how they get their name. There are other Sariyamas too. There are black-legged Sariyamas as well. They're just in a smaller part. So why is he not taking off, flying, and leaving? Um, I mean, he definitely could. He's just more interested in hanging out here with us. Um, as I said earlier, we train our birds with positive reinforcement, give them a lot of choice and control in their environment um, so they can have a really great life with us while they're here. Um, so he has you know, the option to go wherever he wants, but he chooses to stay. Um, he is exploring around and that's reinforcing for right now. So we're letting him do it. And eventually he'll, you know, kind of get his fix and he'll just come back. So when we try to put him away, he won't fly away? Correct. Yeah, he, he normally just walks right back in his enclosure. Typically when we go back on our trail near his home, he actually will run past us to go inside. Um, once he goes inside, we give him um, a lot of treats for going back home to make it very rewarding for him. What kind of calls does he make? Um, he makes a really loud call. Um, he likely isn't going to do it right now. He was very—he was vocalizing a lot this morning, um, but it's just a really high pitch kind of yell, um, and their sound can be heard from over two miles away. I would say if you're out at the center, you are likely to hear him at least once during your visit because he is pretty noisy. Now. Hey, bud. <laughs> Carol's getting creative with her filming. So, um, these guys are very curious. They like to interact a lot with their environment. As you can see with them with a stick, um, they mess with a lot of different. Um, items that we give them. So we give them things called enrichment, which are basically just, um, it could be enrichment can be anything that we put in their enclosure. It could be our training with our <laughs> birds. It's basically anything we do to um, try to stimulate some natural behaviors from these birds. It, you know, keeps them very mentally sound and um, very um, active. Thank you. He's coming back to you, Carol. Hey, bud. <laughs> okay, so he's running back with us now. Are you done? Okay. So he's a little bit more focused now, which is good. So that's pretty much what happens sometimes when um, our outside surroundings around us are a little bit more interesting than the treats in my pocket. Which is okay. And he's about two years old. Um, we started going on walks with him when he was just, I would say like five months old, we really started doing it. So he's had a lot of practice. We trust him a lot. He trusts us a lot. Yeah. All right guys, so thank you so much for tuning in. We're gonna start making our way back home. Um, again, this was our red-legged Sariyama. Tune in tomorrow for another avian home adventure, and we'll see you at 11.